So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here at Photography PX. In today's video, we'll cover the best lens filters. Do you know you can find timestamps and links in the description down below, as well as the pinned comment. And also know this is not a sponsored video. Let's get started. While some photographers argue filters are unnecessary, given today's powerful post-processing tools, they still play a valuable role nonetheless. And a lens filter helps photographers have more control over the quality and amount of light that reaches their sensors. So not only can the right filter save hours of unnecessary post-production, but several of their effects remain unreplicable through editing alone. Namely, they enhance colors in difficult lighting situations while effectively improving your camera's dynamic range. And those effects genuinely improve the quality of the images you take in the field. So despite the changing traditions, they're very much relevant today. But there's quite a bit of debate online amongst which lens filters are truly valuable, and many debate whether investing in a quote budget-friendly option is even worthwhile considering the potential adverse effects on image quality. Some of these arguments are justifiable, but not all of them. There are also several misconceptions about filters that remain, and it can be hard to know which is best, their benefits, and what to consider, especially since purchasing a filter isn't about picking the cheapest one alone, as that generally reduces image quality. With that, we've compiled a guide to explain each of the primary filters available today, and we've also listed the best lens filters in their respective classes, which I'll cover in this video. The first class of valuable lens filters is going to be the circular polarizing filter. The circular polarizer, also known as CPL filters, is the first go-to for many photographers since they improve image quality in most situations. These filters consist of a thin polarizing film mounted or bonded between two layers of glass. And this design is here to remove polarized or reflected phase aligned light. And you rotate a secondary ring to adjust the level of polarization, removing any polarized light entering your lens. Doing so helps control reflections, haze, and glare from shiny, wet, or polished surfaces in the scene. And it increases the level of saturation and contrast to make elements pop. It also effectively improves the camera's dynamic range in the process. Thus, these filters are a must when photographing landscapes as they increase saturation in the skies, making the clouds pop, and they help the overall scene. They also make foliage appear more green and lifelike, which is a nice bonus. Plus, they also remove surface level reflections and specular highlights on water so that you can photograph underneath the surface. The only time circular polarizing filters are not beneficial is when using wide angle lenses as they create varying shades across the frame and cause vignetting in the corners. Overall though, while this lens does reduce the incoming light, causing you to have to compensate with shutter speed or ISO, the results are not replicable in post-processing. So it's worthwhile nonetheless, and they're a must whenever there's glare or atmospheric haze in your scene. Let's cover two examples of two excellent circular polarizing filters on the market. One of those is Breakthrough Photography's X4 CPL. Breakthrough Photography's X4 CPL comes in 17 sizes, ranging from 39 to 112 millimeters. This is a glass circular polarizer filter with a nanotech coating and an MRC coating, a weather seal design, and a brass traction frame. Together, it delivers best in class durability, but it's also the world's most color neutral CPL filter. Breakthrough spent enormous energy finding the design over their already excellent X2 model to make the filter more color neutral, and it now offers a near perfectly flat transmission curve, so gone is any yellow hues or color casts, and they also include a 25-year ironclad guarantee with purchase as a bonus. Another great example is Hoya's HD3 CPL. Hoya's HD3 CPL comes in nine sizes, ranging from 49 to 82 millimeters, and it's also a glass circular polarizer with a nano and MRC coatings, a weather seal design, and a lightweight aluminum frame. But it's now twice as hard and twice as sharp as their award-winning HD2 filter, yet it also sports a high transparency polarizing film, which offers better light transmission than standard films and improves saturation and clarity. The result is that it's fully certified to work with 100 megapixel plus cameras, without any loss of resolution, and Hoya also includes a five-year limited warranty with purchase as a bonus. The next set of filters is going to be neutral density, also known as ND filters. 
The neutral density filter is another go-to for many photographers, especially those shooting landscapes or long exposures. Neutral density filters are dark tone filters that uniformly block a specific amount of light from entering the lens. By doing so, you have more room to manage the exposure and avoid overexposures and blowing your highlights and bright scenes. You can find these filters ranging from a third stop to 10 or more stop reductions, or you can find them with a variable range, which you can adjust freely. Attaching this filter reduces the entire exposure by a set value. Doing so lets you shoot longer than average shutter speeds, perfect for capturing long exposures during bright daylight, and a must for videographers filming outdoors. They also make it possible to shoot at wide open apertures during bright sunlight, making them a go-to for portrait photographers. Overall, ND filters make capturing long exposure photography feasible in any lighting condition, and they're a must if you shoot outdoors in bright sunlight especially. Two examples of great ND filters on the market are going to be Breakthrough Photography's X4ND. The X4ND is Breakthrough Photography's most popular set. This ND filter is available in four densities ranging from 3 to 15 stops with 12 filter sizes ranging from 43 to 150 millimeters. Each filter uses a nanotech and MRC front element to reduce glare, improve contrast, and add protection against dirt or debris. And each filter uses a brass filter frame, adding durability. Yet despite such a heavy density, they deliver outstanding performance and they produce minimal vignettes, color casts, and excellent corner to corner sharpness. Breakthrough also includes their 25 year ironclad warranty with purchase as a bonus. Another great example of ND filters is Lee Filters Stopper Range. The Stopper Range is Lee's most popular and acclaimed release to date. This ND filter is available in three densities ranging from 6 to 15 stops and three filter sizes ranging from 85 to 150 millimeters. The Big Stopper is their medium strength option, providing a 10 stop reduction and it uses a high end resin construction, delivering outstanding corner to corner sharpness and durability. Lee also includes a companion app to calculate long exposures, removing all of the guesswork and a protective pouch as a bonus. The next type of filters is going to be graduated neutral density filters, also known as GND filters. Graduated ND filters are a variant of ND filters. Instead of blocking all incoming light, these filters add a vertical gradient that selectively reduces the light across the length of the filter. Most of these filters are rectangular, so you can move them up or down as needed, depending on the horizon and the scene, but they do require filter holders. Even so, you can find these filters with hard or soft gradual transitions and they come in a wide range of densities ranging from 1 to 10 stops. These are a go-to for landscape photographers, letting them reduce the bright sky, improving its contrast without changing the exposure of the foreground. Doing so lets photographers balance the contrast and dynamic range in the scene, and also lets them capture an HDR image with better dynamic range within a single exposure, all in camera. Overall, while you can largely replicate this particular effect by bracketing exposures and altering images in post-processing, these filters can save precious time in the field, and they generally make post-processing more efficient and easier. Depending on the exposure length, you can spend several minutes bracketing exposures, and every minute counts when you've hiked through difficult terrain to capture a fleeting sunset, but admittedly these filters only work when capturing even horizons. Uneven elements like buildings, trees, or mountains will get darkened too, so in such cases bracketing the exposure will be the better option to get better results. Even so, they're a great and helpful option. Two great examples of GND filters will be Lee Filters Hard Graduated ND. Lee Filters Hard Graduated ND is one of their most popular series, especially for landscape photographers. This hard GND filter set offers three densities ranging from one to three stops and three sizes from 85 to 150 millimeters. And each filter uses a high-end construction made of resin for durability and excellent clarity. They're also rectangular in shape, so you can freely adjust where the gradient falls within in the frame for precise control, but the hard gradient blends seamlessly into the scene and it's ideal for landscapes with flat horizon lines. Lee also includes a carrying pouch to protect the filter when not in use as a bonus. Another great example is going to be Koken's Nuances Extreme Graduated series. Koken's Nuances Extreme Graduated ND filter are their high-end range of square filters, and these soft GND filters are available in three densities ranging from two to four stops and three sizes from 84 to 130 millimeters. Each filter uses tempered glass, upping the durability fourfold over the previous series, and it also makes them entirely resistant to ghosting and flares and free from vignettes. They're also rectangular in shape as well. So 
so you can freely adjust the gradient as needed for more fine-tuned control. But unlike hard GND filters, the soft transition here across the filter is suited to a broader range of use cases. So you can use these filters with uneven horizons. Koken also includes a carrying pouch to protect the filter when not in use as a bonus. The last and final lens filter that's relevant today are UV filters. UV or skylight filters block ultraviolet light from entering the lens. You can find these filters using glass constructions with anti-reflective coatings, but in today's world, their benefit is debatable, and they're generally viewed mainly as a protective cover to prevent unwanted damages to an expensive lens. Historically, they were used to prevent UV light from damaging film, but with the advent of digital sensors, their benefit has faded since CMOS sensors already have a built-in UV slash IR filter installed over them. Even so, UV filters can remove atmospheric UV haze in certain situations, namely they help when shooting at high elevations or on bright days near water or snow, all of which cause haze that interferes with contrast. But most photographers use these filters to prevent damages from sand, dust, and debris when working in harsh conditions, and they help make cleaning the lens easier and offer some protection to the front element against sudden impacts. So they're generally a go-to for photographers who want to add insurance without having to adjust for unwanted exposure changes in the process, but you can also use a circular polarizing filter to double in this regard, so keep that in mind. And most high-end lenses have a UV coating already, so if you have a high-end lens, it's a bit redundant. Even so, UV filters are a good option if you want extra peace of mind and insurance for an expensive lens. Just be sure to get a quality filter with a multi-resistant, also known as MRC coating, to avoid any negative impacts on image quality. Two great examples of UV filters though are gonna be Hoya's HD3 UV. Hoya's HD3 UV filter is their latest general purpose filter. It's available in nine sizes ranging from 49 to 82 millimeters. It's a clear filter using optical glass and a nano anti-reflective coating designed for protection or to remove unwanted UV light that causes haze. It also features a thin lightweight aluminum alloy ring preventing unwanted vignettes. Hoya also extensively coated the filter to help bead water, oil, and stains for easy cleanup, yet it's now five times sharper and 800% harder than their award-winning HD2 UV filter, and it's now fully certified to support 100 megapixel plus cameras without any loss of resolution as well. Hoya also includes a plastic case for storage and a lifetime warranty as a bonus. Another great example is Breakthrough Photography's X4 UV. Breakthrough Photography's X4 UV comes in 17 sizes, ranging from 39 to 112 millimeters. This optical glass UV filter offers a nanotech coating and MRC that's weather sealed and uses a brass traction frame. The frame is also ultra slim and double threaded for secure connections that eliminates vignettes entirely. Together, it offers class leading durability amongst other UV filters and outstanding rigidity, yet it's also among the sharpest UV filters around and offers exceptional light transmission. Breakthrough also includes their 25 year ironclad guarantee with purchase as a bonus. So there you have it, my friends. There's our list of the best lens filters and their respective benefits and use cases. For more information, check out our website, photographypx.com. You can also look at the pinned comment in the description down below, and I'll take you right to the full post. I've been your host, Devon Lennox. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and it added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if we overlook something or we miss something that we covered in today's video. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, Photography. <laughs>